Starkey, we have had 40 coronations, 40 coronations in Westminster Abbey. It's been going on for a thousand years. Not quite. Go on, tell me. Uh, well, we had one that, well, we, good ones from William the Conqueror. Yes. But of course, the Abbey is reconstructed in the middle of the 13th century by the only king who isn't crowned there. That's Henry III. And he's the one who's really responsible for the great setting that we're going to see. He's responsible for the reburial of Edward the Confessor, where the king and queen in today's coronation will actually retreat to change their robes and to change from their coronation robes into their robes of state. So that extraordinary setting of the Abbey is the creation. It's extraordinary. The only man who's not crowned there. The one thing I knew for certain about this today with GB News is because he got Starkey, you're going to get better historical knowledge than you'll get from any other broadcaster in the entirety of the world. Of course, before the Abbey was used, the Saxons had kings, and they had their own form of coronation. They did indeed. The capital was mainly Winchester. Um, uh, that's the old capital. But there's also um, the, 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 the really, bit, the really ma amazing coronation, which I talked about in our you know, terrific GB News documentaries, is actually at Bath in Bath Abbey, um, and that's the coronation of the, the founder king, really, of this service, called King Edgar, in 973, so in exactly 1,050 years since this service was effectively first used. But you, we, we'll, we'll, actually, we will actually know uh, the, reason, the reason that there's Bath Abbey, and yeah. is we'll see the Bishop of Bath standing on the king's icon. Do you know what? I'm going to confess ignorance. I'm not sure. Well, <laughs> left, right, right. left or right hand, yeah. yes. and, and maybe he'll get confused too. But that's why the Bishop of Bath is okay, helping the king. Fine. So. Let's go to the Abbey and let's join Mark White. He'll tell us what's going on as we speak. Yes, well, of course, here is uh, a sterile area because of the security that is required around uh, the Abbey itself. So the uh, the crowds, they're just up towards Parliament Square and then of course lining this route. Now uh, less than an hour ago we were told that actually all of the viewing areas along the route, Nigel, are absolutely full. There is no more capacity there so people are being guided to go to the larger open-air spaces, so at St James's Park, Green Park and Hyde Park. And there is the added benefit, Nigel, if they head up in that direction, that they will be able to watch the ceremony on the big screens there. So you don't necessarily, given that there are so many uh, people in the crowds there, you might not get a good signal to, to watch it on your phone. But if you are not able to get into the procession route, then at least you can go up to the park, uh, the various parks to see the big screens. And we can see inside the Abbey there still uh, some empty seating there because uh, that is for uh, the heads of state from 100 countries around the world, other uh, VIPs and royalty. Uh, from around the world that is represented here uh, as well. We have had people though in the Abbey from about half past seven uh, this morning they started uh, to arrive here waiting for this service which has still got um, uh, the better part of an hour really before it uh, gets underway properly. Of course we're expecting the uh, Diamond Jubilee coach to leave Buckingham Palace under escort by the military, uh, by those military personnel, 200 of them from the household division, uh, those guardsmen and women uh, on horseback uh, accompanying the Diamond Jubilee uh, coach uh, both uh, in front and behind as that coach makes its way up up the mall to Trafalgar Square, and then round from Trafalgar Square down Whitehall onto Parliament Square, and then eventually arriving here at Westminster Abbey, where the King and the Queen will enter through the Great West Door. Uh, so it's 1.42 miles, uh, almost a mile and a half. Uh, it's a significant uh, route, a lengthy route. It's not as long as the uh, close to four mile route that uh, we saw back in 1953 
for the Queen's uh, uh, coronation back in uh, that year. Um, but it's still a significant uh, procession route that gives the vantage point for many thousands of people. And of course, as we've just been saying, we know uh, that they have filled that route as we would expect to capacity and are now filling uh, the various uh, wider open spaces in the Royal Parks and elsewhere around the capital. Mark White, thank you for that. And I must say, if you are en route and you're worried that they're saying there's no more space in the Mallow elsewhere, believe you me, behind us here in Green Park, they've got all the facilities you can need, food, drinks, loos, everything, big screens. So if you are on your way, don't be put off by people saying the route is filled. There's plenty of space in the parks and they've got this very, very well organised. Well, we're now ten minutes away from seeing the mounted band of the Household Cavalry emerge from the gates of Buckingham Palace with David Starkey, the Diamond Jubilee coach is the first coach that we're going to see. The reason for it, of course, is that it's comfortable. It's modern. Uh, I, there's a whisper it's even air-conditioned. Uh -huh. It's properly sprung because the great golden coach that we'll actually see on the way back um, when uh, William IV was crowned, very reluctantly, he didn't want a coronation at all, he complained that it was rather like being at sea in a storm. And as he'd been Lord Admiral and served in the Navy, <laughs> he, he was obviously know. telling the truth. The thing, the thing is only slung on, on leather, so it's unbelievably uncomfortable. Right. Um, the the new state coach, the the Jubilee coach, is really it's. I think it's a Rolls Royce, lot, lightly disguised as a horse. Well, we're going to see Harry. both. We're <laughs> going to see both today. Cameron, a slightly shorter route than the Queen took in 1953. Uh, any particular reason for that? Do you think in their planning they've been concerned about protests? I think there's certainly a couple of reasons as to why. As David very um, mentioned, of course, it is comfort. It's a much shorter route. It's 1.3 miles or something. It goes down uh, the Mall, uh, Trafalgar Square, down Whitehall to towards Westminster Abbey. The Lake Queen's was almost five miles mm, long. Yeah. It did it's Oxford tiny. Street. It's tiny. It did yeah. uh, down, down, uh, down Regent Street as well. But of course, with a bigger route, you need more policing. You need more security. And I think King Charles, the Royal Household, and indeed the government were very mindful of the costs when it came to security and how well that would go down with the British public. So perhaps that's a reason for a shorter route too. And of course, Whitehall is also ultra secure already. Yes. So you've got half of the route that's sorted out because of all the government buildings, Downing Street and whatever. You're, re you're really at the heart of things. Uh, actually, by the way, as you've been since Henry VIII, we're still we're on the edge of Henry VIII's London. Whitehall is Henry VIII's palace. So what you've got, you've got the, the new king going through the what has been the centre of government yeah. since 1529. These um, constant echoes of time. And one aspect that we will bring out as Charles and Camilla go down Whitehall is some of the history that happened there in the 17th century. But I'm going to save that for oh, now. Yeah. I'm save that well, I for mean, now. Wait, wait, you will be in suspense. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason, of course, is that people objecting to a king or a queen, people objecting to a royal family, republicanism, there's nothing new about what's going on. They're behind uh, the it, times. It, it's, it, totally. we, we did this in this country a long time ago, but I'm going to save all of that. But Cameron, um, up in Trafalgar Square today, there have been one or two protests, and the police using their new powers to make one or two arrests. Yes, they absolutely have been. We've been told the tolerance for, for that kind of protest would be very low indeed, and Republican protests, including, as we understand it, the CEO of Republic, the anti-monarchy group, has been arrested, along with a number of other uh, protesters. They were all this is Tony Blair as a knight of the garter. This is the ultimate reward for the Iraq war. <laughs> and there's Gordon Brown there. Um, and David Cameron, of course, there as well. Yes, the great and the good will all be well, in the, the great, Abbey. The well, great. <laughs> well, they think they're the great and the good. And, 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 and we'll be nice because it's coronation <laughs> day. <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe until later, David. Uh, Maybe until later. <laughs> uh, so, Cameron, they've used these new powers. Is that going to provoke controversy? Well, I think perhaps it might. Rep Republic had said they had been in constant dialogue with the Metropolitan Police. The police knew that they were going to be protesting in Trafalgar Square. Republic always said that they were going to be peaceful but noisy, but clearly they, did, um, they, they have been arrested ahead of time. Yes. Not all of them, but some of them certainly have done. And also in the last hour, Nigel, police have also arrested Just Stop Oil protesters who uh, have been spotted uh, on the Mall. We don't know on what grounds just yet, but as you said, new powers for the police, so they are taking no chances 
protesters. They want everything to run smoothly today. Well, no, and it is, of course, I mean, the right to protest, the right to have a different point of view in a free liberal democracy, David, is a very important part yes, of who we are. The point that I constantly make is we are a royal republic. We have a crowned head, but he's as limited as the president of any republic, and indeed more so. And all these freedoms that these people complain about, oh, we, you know, we need freedom. Yeah. And it's, it is the paradox that these people... Boris just Johnson don't just yeah. arriving at the Abbey as we speak. I have no doubt... Liz Truss, Theresa May. Gosh, we've had a lot of prime ministers, haven't we, in the last few years? We really have. It's only when you've seen, see them all. If, 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 if only we could sort of put them up into the, in, into the ranks of the royal family, yeah. you know. We do. Uh, Mark White down at the Abbey. Um, what's the reaction of the crowd to all these former prime ministers? Well, I think, as you said uh, quite correctly, uh, we've gone through quite a few in, uh, in recent years there, so trying to keep up with them, you don't realise just how many there have been. But uh, yes, Theresa May, uh, followed by Boris Johnson, and of course Liz Truss, and before that uh, we saw Tony Blair uh, with Gordon Brown, his uh, successor, and uh, David Cameron in there as well, alongside uh, John Major. So all of the former, uh, living former Prime Ministers represented here uh, alongside the other VIPs and dignitaries who are arriving from, as you can see, all around the world, proudly uh, showing, you know, their national flags. This is the beginning of the Commonwealth procession. Yes. Yes, this is the Commonwealth procession. With their flags. And, of course, the remarkable thing about the Commonwealth, David, is there are now, I think I'm right in saying, 56 countries. Even more than that were in the Empire. And some of these countries weren't even in the Empire. That's correct. They've... And isn't this, isn't what we're seeing yeah. here, as the Commonwealth representatives and heads of state arrive in the Abbey, isn't what we're seeing here, Queen Elizabeth II's legacy? Wasn't this her tremendous success? I think that what we're seeing, what we'll see throughout this service is, in fact, the monarchy reshaped in the image of Queen Elizabeth II. Mm -hmm. We will hear her words, which are incorporated almost like holy text into the service. We're seeing here the thing that she cared most about, the Commonwealth, that she made absolutely sure that Charles was head of. Uh, you know, that extraordinary, imperious gesture in which they were all thinking of having an election. And the Queen said, well, we would very much like it if, uh, whereupon, you know, they all fell in line uh, before Her Majesty. But these are the flags which we've also seen, many of them, uh, the flags of the realms, that's to say, yes. where the King is still King. We've actually seen them in the Marl for the first time alongside the Union Jacks. This is the first time, again, they've been seen in the Abbey. And, of course, many of these are new flags that, that before the, the, all Justin, of these Justin, realms Justin would have, Trudeau from Canada yes, arriving now uh, with, 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 with the Canadian maple leaf flag before of course they all had the Union Jack in it somewhere yes, uh, yes. and, and you know, there was then as part of this process because you said something very important Nigel the British Empire is the first empire to have willed its own end to have willed the end of freedom and self-government yes. and so when people complain about oh Australia may become, uh, may become a republic that's a natural concern conclusion to this process. Yes, Rishi Sunak arriving with his wife as we speak. An interesting point to make also is that everybody that files into that abbey is going past the tomb of the unknown soldier, which they have beautifully surrounded by spring flowers, bluebells, primroses, cowslips, etc. But of flowers, course, flowers of remembrance, yes. very much chosen by the king himself. Yes. The, what we're seeing inside the abbey is this extraordinary scheme of floral decoration. Uh, in earlier coronations, there have been great swags of lavish fa fabric, fringe and whatever. The king has chosen instead to use the thing that in many ways I think he cares about, even more than architecture. Yeah. Uh, but but gardening. And, and it's flowers. understated, but it's rather beautiful. It's very beautiful. It's also, again, he's very keen on symbolism. Uh, and each one, of the, each one of these flowers, and I'm afraid Gammon is looking at it now, I can't remember <laughs> no, I'm going to come to him in a second, yeah. don't worry. Uh, <laughs> each, 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 each flower, each arrangement has a specific, a, a, a specific symbolism. It, 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 it's, it's whatever it is, rosemary for remembrance and yeah. whatever. Um, and, yeah. so and, and, of course, one of the things that binds all these countries together in this remarkable way is, I mean, you know, as you say, no, no empire before has ever willed its own end. No empire before has ever finished up with a club where people are friendly and play sport together and have these extraordinary links. But of course, what the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier also, the way that binds us together. 
national anthem plays as the king and queen travel through the archway at the front of Buckingham Palace in the Diamond Jubilee State Coach. Buckingham Palace this morning updated the Queen's web page to reflect the fact she is now Queen rather than Queen Consort. Did they? Yes, okay. they did. Okay. Okay. And in the liturgy, it also refers to Miller as the Queen as well. Okay, well, then we, will, we, we will drop any use of the word Consort from this. But it's drizzling a little bit. They're folks. right through the gates it's now. Not too bad. They're through the central gates of the palace. Uh, these are royal. The, 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 this is the processions of the royals. The, yeah. And these are these are mostly European royals. These are well. There's a very wide selection. There are there are also kings and oh, kings and queens or whatever they're called of the various Commonwealth realms. Yeah, so and you, uh, that should, uh, realm is the wrong word. Yeah, there are countries of which the king, yes, uh, yeah, states, yeah, yeah, states. That's right. Yes, no, absolutely, no, absolutely. And this is now the huge view that you're intended to see. We're looking right down the Marl towards Admiralty Arch at the bottom. We have the flags on either side with, and the, 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 the escort of the lifeguards on their black horses with their scarlet tunics and their white plumes riding immediately behind. The Diamond Jubilee State Coach, which you're seeing on your screen now, is almost five and a half metres long. How much do we think Charles himself has been involved with these preparations? Oh, I think a lot, to be honest. You see little subtle details in the coronation uh, procession, what everybody is wearing, but also even inside the abbey, the flower arrangement uh, is a nod to the, uh, his love of sustainability yeah. uh, uh, and things such as that. And, and the king and queen consort's love of gardening, I'm told as well, is reflected within the flower uh, arrangements. The fact that the guest list contains uh, pa uh, charity representatives from the various patronages, patronages that the king and queen consort holds. It's all of those things I think the king would have been heavily involved in. And the music, the choice of music, the insistence on the great choral tradition, um, that, that, that again the king has been passionately involved in this. He believes in the amazing Anglican tradition of choral music. There will be a, there will be a major change, however, in that there will be girls' choirs as well as boys' yeah. choirs involved. So some of the music may sound slightly odd because it will be heavily weighted to the treble, with, of course, girls' choirs alongside boys' choirs. And in the Abbey itself, Cameron, about 2,500 guests? 2,300. 2,300. Uh, David, 1953. How did they get 8,000 people this is into the, the Abbey? This is the smallest coronation congregation for 400 years. They will descend from the coach and they will enter the Abbey through those great doors, that extraordinary front, which wasn't actually finished until the beginning of the 18th century, but carefully keeping the Gothic style. Again, you, you saw there that wonderful flash of, of the breastplate of, of one of the lifeguards. So they, they were due here at 53, Cameron. They're, they're actually five minutes early, but they're looks two, of it. They're it two, does, two, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yes. And, and also, we haven't seen the Prince and Princess of Wales yet. No. So I'm wondering when they're going to appear. Perhaps they're so processing in together. The King and Queen descending. The Queen there. Yes. yes. So, ladies and gentlemen, Annabelle Elliott, the Queen's youngest sister, who is an interior designer, uh, and of course, during a documentary last year, she famously accused the Queen Consort of, hide, of burying her teddy bear in the, in the garden when they were children. Uh, lady Fiona Lansdowne is a long-time friend. She is also a lady in attendance. And look at the length of the King's train. Absolutely, and this, the pages as this, well. This extraordinary train of his robe of state. Yes. And we just saw uh, the Queen's pages as well. Her grandchildren, Gus and Louis Lopez. Gus, of course, recently broke his arm on a biking accident on holiday, so he is in a sling, as we understand it. Uh, so they're two twins. Um, Freddie Parker Bowles as well, the 13-year-old, um, who's Camilla's other grandson from his, uh, her son, Tom Parker Bowles' uh, relationship with his former wife, oh, Sarah. Oh, look again, staggering. Now, this is the... Sorry, this is the king. This is the king, this is, this is the king. Yes. I'm sorry, yes, I misled. Was, that was the queen. The, and he, of course, ages himself, one yes. of which is Prince George of Wales, who is the future king himself. Uh, Prince William's oldest child, nine years old, 
His other pages include Nicholas Barkley, who is the grandson um, of uh, Sarah Troughton, I think that's how he pronounces. He's one of uh, who is one of the Queen's six companions, which of course replaces the ladies in waiting role um, for for Her Majesty. The cross signifies the Archbishop of Canterbury, who is knighted. Prince and Princess of Wales. The king now is in the coronation chair, the ancient chair made for the great emperor king of Britain, Edward I, and under it is the stone of Schoon, and each item of the regalia will now be presented to him, beginning with the spurs. Every son. These are peers of multi-faith. This is a new element in the, in, 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 in the whole service, the emphasis on the multitude of faiths which are now in England, but all, as it were, under the aegis of the established church, using the words of Her Majesty the Queen, that the, ch the Church of England is there not to enforce a faith, but to leave freedom for all faiths. And now the role of the Prince of Wales becomes very important. The role of the Prince of Wales. This now is the moment at which the king becomes king. The royal robe goes on, the robe that goes back to the coronation of George IV, put upon most touchingly by his son, by the next king, by the Prince of Wales. And, and now, of course, we have the ring, a sort of marriage element, David, to the whole service. That's right. Um, th this, this again, it is a sense of the king bound almost like a, a groom to the bride of the nation. Now the glove, David, this is slightly more complicated. The glove, this is one of the antique elements of the ceremony. It's originally because the king's hands have been anointed. It was presented once upon a time by the Lord of the Manor of Worksop. That is now a limited liability company, so it can be presented by one of the, uh, one of the peers of the faith. King of kings and Lord of lords, bless, we beseech thee, this crown and so sanctify thy servant Charles. God save the King! God save the King Charles! Lord save the King Charles! May the King live forever! Beast
And now we move on to the coronation of the Queen. And now the Queen will be presented with the rod and scepter. of the Queen, composed by Andrew Lloyd Webber.
king and queen have now gone behind the altar to the St Edward Chapel where they will change their robes and exchange their crowns and the king will emerge with the imperial state crown.